are again. Carava. If you were a tortoise, Togo, where would you hide? Mid needs another. She can come and get it herself. Here. Take a look at my wares. Of course. Anything else? Of course. Anything else? Of course. Fine choice. Anything else? Take care. The bearer of the burning quill is within, my lord. Prithee enter. The bearer of the burning quill is within my head. Your grace, my lord, I trust your journey was not overly onerous. Cyril, you found a letter from father? Yes, I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my lord. It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the Duchy, Your Grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the Burning Quill, who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. But your father's dream did not end there. His grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse, and the founding of a new university 
to further the development of non-magical technologies. With the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins, Archduke Elwyn saw this as the only means of securing Rosaria's survival. He wished to see men and bearers treated as equals. To see centuries of common wisdom overturned. Small wonder he did not think it achievable within his lifetime. But he thought it achievable nonetheless. Had he not, he would never have written this message. Nor would he have entrusted his vision to his most faithful aides. Those who would have stood with you, shielded you from the machinations of the less benevolent personages at court. It's a pity only they are still with us. Hmm. Tis true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath. But one at least remains. And she has come bearing gifts. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted to me by my predecessor extended only to recovering His Grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it. Or a part of it, at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, Your Grace. Thank you, Cyril. Shall we then? Marquis, if you have a moment. What is it, Cyril? One of our brethren lately journeyed across the strait in order to pursue a new avenue of inquiry in our ongoing investigation. He sent an owl some while ago, but we have heard naught from him since. Was he surveying another fallen ruin? No. The object of his study was a savior cult that has arisen in ash in recent years. We believe it may have some connection to the Circle of Malleus, an ancient religion that worshipped Ultima as its god. By gaining an understanding of this new faith, we hoped to learn more of the Circle's original beliefs. And so you sent one of your brothers to Ash, a continent teeming with orcs and Akashic. Fully cognizant of the risks, yes. I entrusted the mission to one of the most able of our order, the third chair, a master of the arts of combat and survival, both. Though he has been silent for some days now, I have thus far refrained from sending any others in search of him, lest they be lost in turn. Yet, it seemed only right to inform you of the situation, given your unique experience of the perils of Ash. For as you so earnestly advised me, it would not do to abandon a man to his fate, when he might yet be saved. So be it. When my brother chose to undertake the task, he too knew the risks. Lord, what was an, an, for, I, for, he for... <sighs> he would not. But Ash is a big place. Can you be any more specific? Perhaps. The last owl I received from him mentioned a village where he had heard the cult were wont to assemble. Mickelberg was its name. It lies in the southern reaches of Walud. If aught ill befell him, I expect it did so there. Right. I'll see what I can do. You are much too kind, my lord. Go then, with my hopes, and may the Firebird's flame ever burn in your heart. When last I heard from him, the third chair was bound for Mickleberg. If you mean to seek him out, my lord, I can think of no better place to start. When last I heard from him, 
The third chair was bound for Mickleback. If this new faith really is an offshoot of the Circle of Madness, then... Let's concentrate on finding the third chair first, shall we? This is the Required Tree, an archive where we of the Undying collect and collate our findings. Fragments of Ultima's true nature surely lie buried within these pages. We have only to unearth them. This is the Required Tree, an archive where we of the Undying... Collecting to later findings. Fragments of ultimate. True nature surely lies there if you The Undying are not the only secret fellowship in this realm, you know. There are others, each working for their own ends. Why, not so very long ago, a society committed to discovering how one might cast magics without a catalyst was found to be operating throughout Valisthea. They were denounced as heretics, rooted out, and driven from our shores, never to be seen again. The Undying are not the only secret fellowship in this realm, you know. There are others, each working... My lord, your grace. I... I hardly recognize you. I am Goditha, retainer of House Rosfield, loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. Your father, the Archduke Elwyn, entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in bringing it to you. Lift up your head, Lady Goditha. You have our gratitude for your service to our house and to our father. I merely did my duty as any proud Rosarian would. My lady, perhaps you could explain a little more? What exactly is the gift you bring? As I'm sure you know, it has long been the custom for the children of House Rosfield to be presented with certain keepsakes upon their coming of age. Indeed it has. Our father often spoke of the day when our turn would come. And had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Alas, he did not live. Indeed, he was taken from us even before they could be completed. He had intended to claim the heartstone with which each armband was to be finished himself, but it was not to be. And his gifts remain incomplete. I see. It saddens me to bring them before you as they are. It was your father's wish that you be presented with the finished articles, not these works in progress, but with his grace long since gone and the stone left unclaimed, I had little choice. You are grown men now, and his house is yours. And while I would not presume to insist upon your claiming the heartstone in his stead, I know that nothing would have pleased him more than for you to do so. Thank you, Lady Goditha. What say you, Clive? What else? Of course, my lady. May our father's will be done. Oh, I am much obliged. Do you know where we might find this heartstone, my lady? I do. Though it may be a matter of a good deal more than simply happening upon it. It is found in the bellies of Elder Griffins, you see. We do at least know where to find one. A certain specimen has made its nest in Titan's Wake, not far from here. A certain specimen? You are most perceptive, Your Grace. In answer to your unspoken question, yes. In fact, this is the very same beast your father meant to slay. I have been tracking its movements since you were but a boy. Were you to slay it in his stead, as men of House Rosfield, it would surely make your father proud. 
What say you, Joshua? What else? The griffin your father meant to slay is currently nesting in Titan's Wake, not far from here. Slay it in his stead, and claim the heartstone that he could not. The griffin your father... Joshua. I expect Lady Goddatha will know. This is the required tree, an archive where we of the Undying collect. Oh, thank the founder you were safe. The griffin is slain then? And a heartstone claimed. Yes, this radiant luster, like frozen flame, it is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. Your father would be so proud. Lady Goddatha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. They are yours, after all. Heartstone is harder and more enduring than garnet, or even ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion. And the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together, as Phoenix and Shield, as brothers in arms. Only then 
might those enemies be overcome? Indeed. His Grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Godetha, for remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So, how were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands, of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewellery be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the Founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the griffin, thinking I might claim the heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued, until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that His Grace's will had been recovered, and that his sons were alive and well. Lady Godetha, on behalf of my father and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, for coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. I remain your faithful servant, my lord. I remain your... F Faithful servant, my lord. The bands suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. <laughs> and we thank you for the part you played, Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial? Atop Hawk's Cry Cliff. Let him see that you have received his blessing, and that his vision lives on in you. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? Shall we pay your father a visit? I think we should. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks before we left for Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate, I prithee claim it. For it too is a part of your inheritance, and I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Thank you, Cyril. Come on, Clive. He's waiting. What are you looking for? You've a discerning eye. A 
fine choice. Just what I was looking for. You're sure you don't need it? You've a discerning eye. Farewell. Do you see that too? Let's go. Run like the wind. Coats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! Allow me. I don't need your... Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige him. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. Men... Finish him. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors! I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. But I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My lord, Marquis. Or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am. Or the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, 
I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos. But I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together, even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals, but those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, well, we will need an envoy, one who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered, but I'm no diplomat either. And I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And would he happen to be an outlaw too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Well, beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw in ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Uh, my lord Marquis. Your lord uncle bade me escort the field marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my lord. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. No. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. I hope I can convince him at least. Why the hell would Victor take the bearer's side? Why is everyone being mean to Lubor? He didn't do anything wrong. Here to help me pack. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two. In fact, if it's within my power to help you, I will. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. I understand. It's a lot to ask. 
It's that. If Of course. The children will be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. Nubor, are you still here? What is it, Ferda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Further, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any moment. We must make ready to cover the townspeople's escape. Well, what are you waiting for? Yes, my lord. Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. To listen to me. They're coming. You need to evacuate. No, you How long do we have until these Akashic arrive, do you think? There are Why no do they Akashic. need to make such a fuss outside? Right What's the commotion? That snake spitting his lies again by the sound of it. Ah, it's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? to pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now, and they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubor, perhaps? The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me. But it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. You may not trust me, but for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. You're making a mistake. Come, Clive. If our words will not move them, then we must find another way to help save the town. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. I do not know if you are in league with Lubor or if he has merely filled your head with his lies, but I do know that not a word you say is true. I do not know if you are in league with Lubor or if he has merely filled your head with his lies, but I do know that not a word you say is true. Enough of your nonsense, Lord Underhill. Leave us be. Enough of your nonsense, Lord Underhill. Leave... You have to listen to me. They're coming. You need to evacuate. I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubor raving about now? What commotion is this, I asked myself. A sudden stampede of customers towards my humble stall. No, it was a stampede of customers away from Lubor's. What commotion is this, I asked myself. Anything I can interest you in? 
My thanks. Here you are. An excellent choice. I don't have any more in stock. Fare you well. Lord Ferda. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid! Ferda! I've been looking for you everywhere! Victor? I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly! You have to believe me! The Akashic are coming! They don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't tire, and they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There won't be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! Huh? <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run! <laughs> Run, Bearer! Yeah, yeah. yeah run! run. Yeah. Far, Just far away! Run! Run! Just go, Bearer! Yeah! 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 Come on, then! Go on! Go on! Go on! Just go! Just go! 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 Wait! Someone's coming! Go! Go on! Stop! You're hurting him! <laughs> what did Lubor ever do to you? Hmm? He solves all your stupid problems and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you used every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day, every day, making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you! Ever! But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like he doesn't even exist! <sighs> Lubo, we have heard enough. No! Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. <sighs> So tell us, 
How do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? We won't run, but we will fight. All right, then. Fine. Gather round if you don't want to die. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years, until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage. And they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Dalamil at all costs. Conrad, can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor, and the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchant not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Where else but the most perilous place of all? I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheratina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. <sighs> I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalamil. Looks like everyone's ready. I better not keep them waiting. Get all these weapons into the hands of the Watch. They're no use lying around here. Understood. We will defend Dalamil as best we can, but the town won't be truly safe until the Horde at Cheratina has been dealt with. And who better to subdue the League of Outlaws than the King of their kind? We will defend Dalamil. inside.
leave a single one alive. The League is disbanded. I should get back to Dalamil and see how the others fared. All the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. The last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sir Clive has returned. Clive! What news from Cheritina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. Friends, the Horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated, and we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Victory is ours. We bloody did it. We saved Dalamil. Lubor, allow me to apologize. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did, and for that we are... Truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. We need you, Luvor. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. It is a stain on ours. We thought only of what we perceived bearers to be, not what you truly are. The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. Name them. Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil, and I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together, just as we did today. 
Of course. You have our word. And secondly, you will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer within our walls shall be afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do, and came so close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. That you continue to work for the good of Dalimil, as you always have. Condition accepted. Well then, it seems my mayorship is all but confirmed. Do I get some sort of special hat? How fickle fate can be. Not so long ago, I had resigned myself to leaving Dalamil in disgrace. And now, I find myself her leader. Here, for everything. Lubo, about the children. Fear not, you are of course relieved of your responsibility. I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure they're safe here. I don't doubt that you will. And not just the children, but everyone in Dalamel. I'll do my best. Can't have all your hard work going to waste. I shall devote my every effort to creating a haven for man and bearer both. Just like a certain someone else I know. Someone to whom I owe a debt of gratitude. I shall devote my every effort... From bearer boy to mayor of Dalamil. How far Lubo has come. And how richly he deserves it. Well, I certainly didn't expect it, but Dalamil seems more united than ever. I'll have to redouble my efforts to bring Costness under control. Can't have Lubo showing me up again. Well, from bearer boy to mayor of Dalamil, how far Lubo has come, and how richly he deserves it. <laughs> Of much needed peace. Not that it will last. Fairer though he may be, we <sighs> A bit of much needed peace. Not that it will last. serious you two go on without me 
I doubt that boat will hold a third. If you're sure, we won't be long. Hop in, boy. right through those trees. Come on. Race you there? I bet I could still beat you. was our hideaway, wasn't it, Torgal? Coming here helped me to forget who I was, or wasn't. Prince, Shield, son his mother could love. Had I been any one of those things? Perhaps. What is it, boy? This is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did... you bring these here? My sparring sword. Well, well. <laughs> You never stopped looking for me, did you, boy? <laughs> Thank you, Togo. For never giving up. For never forgetting. Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. People always talk about the importance of putting the past behind you. But without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. 
And we certainly can steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Togol. Let's go home. Sorry for the wait. We're ready. It's oil. After what happened here, it's a miracle there was any left at all. I'd better get these materials to Min so she can finish her prototype. Tell me this is all you need. Ah, oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me this is all you need. It's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero. <sighs> And... And a cogwheel. Just a tiny one. Though, that's the problem. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait. The children. When they took apart your scales, there was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I... They didn't use it when we put the scales back together. The young'uns? But why would the... You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. Don't look at me like that, Clive. I already apologised to Blackthorn. Miserable old bugger. Besides, you can't expect me to keep track of every nut and nail floating about this place. It's a mess! Don't look at me like that, Clive. I already apologised to Blackthorn. Sid! Is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! Do you think she'll let us help? That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot! We remember! We saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. That's... Good to know. Look! I found it! Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. That's all for now. But I'll let Mid know about your... hoard. Just in case. Thanks, Sid. Back for another part. We've got screws and bolts and nails and nobbles and noodles and, um... Back for another part. 
We've got screws and bolts and nails. Has Midadol mentioned a new project yet? Not exactly. Well, did they have it? They did. And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own. But with the right cog in the right place? Well, you just wait and see. That should do her. Here goes nothing. <sighs> Titan's tits. It wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. Honestly... These bloody engines are driving me mad! I was so sure this would be the day she saw it. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes, children, their mums, and their dads. Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head, or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive. Have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one, so that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. Ooh, <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one, yeah. <laughs> right. Of course, if I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. 
My dad always said, dream big. But it isn't the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do. What shall I do with your model? You spent a lot of time on it. We both did. What, that old thing? Not healthy to cling to your failures, Clive. But weigh you down, you know. Sound advice. Still, I suppose my prototypes will probably be worth a fair bit when I'm as famous as Bart's the Builder. Seeing as you're always strapped for coin, suppose I can give it to you. Just make sure you get a good price when you do come to part with it. I'd say that was up to you as much as me. You're not leaving already, are you? <sighs> Make a name for yourself. You better bloody add to and all. Enjoy it while you can, Clive. <laughs> Imagine that, eh? <laughs> Till then, though. Be seeing you, Clive. has wandered hither and thither and so Oh, I wasn't expecting you back. You weren't this. All in good time, eh? Best of luck out there, Sid. Good girl. Faster! Unwavering will and an unbreakable bond. Do you really think we're strong enough? To save the world? Of course. To have overcome father's political enemies. Of that I'm less certain. Especially knowing what we know now. What mother was truly capable of. But perhaps these bands would have helped. Knowing he was with us would have made all the difference. It's just back there. Father always fought for what he believed was right. It wasn't until that night at Phoenix Gate that I realized I had never fought for anything. I always had someone else to do the fighting for me. I'm 
matter how fate conspired against him, he never lost heart, never looked back, never stopped fighting. To me, he was the greatest of men. And I've been trying to live up to his ideals ever since. We all have, Clive. We all have. And we'll keep trying. Because that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> what he would have done himself. Even if it meant standing against the very gods in the heavens. I shall be borrowing this, Father, if I may you might watch over us as we follow in your footsteps. <laughs> We won't lay you down. Onward then. Onward. To the end. And to a new beginning. <laughs>